Okay, so this is a custom leather sheath order. Never made one before. Um, I was sent some pictures of what the kind of the idea that they wanted and the actual item that was going to be in the leather sheath, which I don't often get, which made it a bit easier for me. But having never made one before, I was basically going from idea to create stage without any of the other parts of the design stage. So the first thing I've done is measure to see roughly how much space I need to be able to put the leather, to be able to put the saw into the leather. And then I've measured out and cut a couple of pieces. There's a lot of staring and looking at it, thinking about it, thinking what's going to work, what's not. This is why I did a time lapse because it would uh, otherwise it would have been a six hour long video. So this is me actually. I'm out of shop, but I'm actually doing a bit of googling some uh, some other designs to kind of get an idea of how they've done it. And I actually found some designs which look completely impossible because the top of the leather sheath is narrower than the bottom. So I'm not entirely sure how you're supposed to get the the saw into it. So again, um, I've decided I'm going to chop off a little bit more off the top because having researched a lot of leather sheaths, they don't have such a big flap at the top. Um, and I've also decided that uh, I want to try and give it a little bit of shape just so it doesn't look so blocky. Um, yeah. Again, this is me just stood <laughs> thinking about it, have a drink, have a bit more of a Google... And then I thought, whilst I'm stewing on that, whilst the ideas are going around in my head, I will create the belt loop section of the leather sheath. As the customer required the leather sheath to be able to take an on and off his belt without having to undo his belt. So the idea was a popper system where he could just slip it on and off quite easily. So I've decided to go for a simple flap with four pop fasteners just for strength because it's not the lightest item and also with it not being like the practical EDC and the practical wallet where a good chunk of leather is actually sat around the belt it's going to be hanging off the belt so I wanted to make sure it was nice and secure. In my process I do do a lot of putting things on before I actually physically fix them because once you fix them that's it you can't go back um, so I do a lot of placing things to get an idea of w whether they look good if they need to be moved and then I work out my punch hole points from there again this is me doing a little google just to get a rough idea of which direction I need to have the pop, the pop fasteners fixed because luckily I did actually realise that the initial way I was going to do it would have meant that the customer wouldn't physically be able to get the loop onto his belt. So a bit of googling helped me there. And now I've gone back to the main leather sheath part because the I have to work out how I'm going to fix it, fix the loop part to the back of the sheath so that it doesn't obstruct the actual saw coming in and out of it. Um, here I'm measuring the belt loop section against an actual belt, that's a one and a half inch belt which is kind of the standard size but I wanted to get, make sure it was a little bit bigger just in case the customer has a bigger belt. And again I'm placing things to get a rough idea of where they need to be. So this system actually uses a D-ring as well as four pop fasteners and the D-ring allows the belt loop to be attached to the back of the leather sheath whilst the pop fasteners secure the belt loop around the customer's belt. So I finally decided on my positioning and now I'm getting out all the bits required. There's actually four pieces of metal required per pop fastener. So 
so the first four parts are on and then there's a second set of four so that it all clips together and that's all done, dusted. Now there was a brief period of procrastination here because I was wondering what order I needed to stitch things in so that I didn't get myself into deep water. Um, and again, I'm still at the point of working out what shape and size I actually want the, the main body of the leather sheaf to be. We have to bear in mind that leather, this isn't a moulded leather sheath, which quite a lot of them are, but while I'm at the shop I don't have the facilities to be able to mould leather, so we decided to go with a non-moulded leather sheath. But we did want to give it some shape, and we have to bear in mind that the, the item that's going in the leather sheath is quite chunky, like thickness-wise, it's quite chunky. Um, and if I was to make the pocket of the leather sheath too big, then there's a risk that the saw would just fall out and we want this leather sheath to actually hug the saw so that it gets a nice comfortable natural mold to it so in the beginning the leather sheath is going to be quite tight and it's going to take a fair amount of putting the saw in and taking it out and repeating that many times until it finds that perfect position I also had to consider that I didn't know which way, because the, the shape of the saw that was going to be living in this sheath um, is not the same shape when you put it in one way or the other. It's actually it's actually a different shape, so that would create a different mould. So I had to be conscious that I didn't know which way the customer was likely to put the sheath, put the, put the knife saw in the sheath. So I didn't want to create something that was going to be too tight or too loose so I, I think I lots of procrastination lots of standing around staring at it uh, looking at the numbers um, I think I kind of got just the perfect balance between a nice tight leather sheath uh, that would stretch a little bit with time so that the saw would sit in there snugly but wouldn't fall out and now I am preparing the stitch holes to connect the D-ring and the leather that loops around the D-ring onto the back of the sheath. Now I did, luckily I, I stopped and thought for a second, I was about to start stitching the whole sheath together when I realised that I wouldn't be able to stitch the back support section if the main sheath had been stitched together already. So I've punched the holes for it all but I then pulled it apart and rightly so decided to stitch the back support section on first. Just did four small lines of stitching that would be super secure and the bottom two are actually going to be hidden by the main pocket of the leather sheath. The top two if there was nothing in the sheath, you, you will see the two lines. Uh, there's not really much we can do about that, but my stitching's pretty neat. It's in a straight line. I do measure it and make sure it is in a straight line. So yeah, that's that bit done. And now I'm happy with that. So now I start to stitch the front pocket of the leather sheath onto the back section. Uh, I've actually sped this time lapse up because I think seeing watching somebody stitching isn't particularly exciting. It does actually look like I'm doing some sort of arm workout. Um, another reason that my arms have to go so wide like that is um, I like to try, wherever possible, to use one single piece of thread for the entire stitch that goes all the way around the leather sheath. I just think it looks nicer. Um, so I basically get a piece of thread that is as long as I can physically hold with both hands. Um, so in the beginning, there's lots of uh, outstretched arms. And then as I start to use up more thread, I get faster because I'm not having to, put, not having to pull so much. Um, and you can kind of see that in the time lapse. I get faster and faster and faster. And then I'm very nearly done. 
and then whenever finishing off a stitch I always go double back on myself twice to make sure it's nice and tight I snip off the thread and then I burn the edges just gives it a, a waxy seal on it it's really really handy and now the last point before the leather craft is completed um, I like to burnish the edges so I use a um, burnishing gum called Tokenoli and it dries clear um, so basically we have to when burnishing two pieces of leather that have been stitched together you have to make sure that the edges are completely flat otherwise burnishing doesn't work properly and it looks a bit rubbish so it takes a while as well that's why I've sped up the <laughs> this is a bit fast at this time lapse um, but I do will keep going back keep going back until I consider the burnish perfect um, so sometimes I'll burnish a bit and then go back to it and I'm not 100% happy with it so I will just trim off a little bit more leather to make sure it's as flat as possible and then with the belt loop section it's one single piece of leather um, and so I'm just um, beveling off the edge just to create a bit more of a rounded edge to try and get the same uniform look as two pieces of leather that have been stitched together and again same process a bit of gum around the edge and you just rub really really fast and <laughs> keep going until it creates a lovely smooth edge and then voila we are done